Hello guys, I'm on Blessed Data and welcome to another review. This time we have Bates Motel Season 1 Episode 9. That's right, we're on the ninth episode, only one more episode until the season finale. Everything's being hyped up to this point and then hyped up again until the last closer season finale. But it has been renewed for second season, so we know that there will be a second season and I'm pretty happy about that. I find the show pretty enjoyable. But let's find out what happened in this episode. This episode's titled Underwater. So before I get right into the review, just want to let you guys know it will contain spoilers. So if you do not want to know what happened, go watch the show and come back. So let's get off right from the beginning. Norma, right off the beginning, tells Officer Romero that this guy named Jake was here. And he, she suspects him of doing all this stuff, of being like the sex slave thing and everything. He asks me about Jake, asks me about Shelby, you know, all this stuff. So, you know... Romero doesn't really think anything of it and says, you know, whatever, whatever happens, happens, just let it go, blah, 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 even though the dead body was in a room and everything, I think that's pretty much enough evidence to assume that something's actually happening, but whatever, Officer Romero kind of just brushes it off. Um, then Norma kind of gets upset with the workers that um, Dylan brought there to uh, stay at the motel, because uh, she asked him, like, what kind of workers are they? Because there's, like, smoking weed on the front porch there of the motel. And Norma's getting all upset because, obviously, he doesn't want that. And, uh, he's, you know, Dylan just says, oh, they're workers, processors for stuff. Don't worry about it. And we can kind of see Norma getting a little bit suspicious. So I'm assuming she's probably going to find out about what Dylan does sooner or later. And probably sooner. I don't know what's going to happen out of that. Probably not much. But I'm just assuming that she's going to pretty much find out. After that, she says, you know, I hate it here, blah, blah, blah. We're moving. So Norma wants to move out of Bates Motel and just start over fresh again. Of course, Norman doesn't like that. He likes his school. He likes the people around here. He wants to stay, and he's going to do any, everything he can to stay at, the, at Bates Motel. So after that, we see Bradley being drowned by Norman. But, of course, it was just a dream, and Norman wakes up. But... The weird thing is that he's still thinking about it, and it kind of flashes back even when he's awake. So obviously he's thinking about killing Bradley, and maybe he will, maybe he won't. I think he actually will, and it would be really cool to see him kill someone just now, in the present tense he's in, and if it's Bradley, hey. So right after this, we see Norma, and she actually receives some flowers from like a delivery guy, and the flowers do not have anything written on the card other than see you soon. You know, how freaky would that be? Just imagine that, if that actually happened to you, and it just said, see you soon, no one signed, nothing. Pretty freaky. So, obviously, Norma just gets really, you know, she's got, you know, whoa, like, all agitated, and like, okay, what's gonna happen here? This guy's after me, and the police aren't gonna help me, because they don't believe me, so what am I supposed to do? And that's kind of what's going through her mind right now. Um, so, yeah, she calls the police, and no one's there. Uh, Romero isn't there, so she can't talk to anyone. After that, Bradley runs into Dylan weirdly enough, and Bradley asked Dylan to break into the building that his, that her father's office was in, because obviously Dylan works for the same guy, so he, she was saying, you know, hey Dylan, can you uh, break into the office, so, because so, I want to see the stuff in my dad's office, and uh, he says, you know, well, I don't think that's like a good idea, but whatever, uh, we'll meet some, you know, over there in, in a day or so, so then, of course, they meet after and they talk about it. But I just want to say that they kind of acted out of character this episode, if I have to say. Dylan and Bradley, because they really didn't act like how they were acting in previous episodes. And it felt, felt kind of weird and kind of like rushed a little bit. Like, kind of like I didn't know what was going on. Like, I, like I wouldn't think that they would act that way. But we'll, we'll get to that when, when we get there. But, um, so yeah. Then uh, Norma wants to relist the motel. So she wants to sell it again, but it's still open in the meantime just so she can make some money, you know, before it closes. Uh, then uh, we find actually out that Norman actually has straight A's in school, which is kind of weird because he seems really awkward and everything, but he's really good at school. So this just kind of give him a little more insight into his past. Um, then all of a sudden at the Bates Motel, Jake's car drives by, and Jake is the weird guy, if you don't know, the one that was in uh, number nine, so, just so if you don't know, the guy that's suspected to be the guy in charge of the sex slave thing, and we actually kind of, it's kind of pretty much confirmed that he is at this episode, he drives by in a car, and Norma's, like, all scared, again, because, again, this guy's watching her, she doesn't know when he's gonna strike, so she's all scared, but Norman comes in, and he brings in the dog, Juno, 
it's fully taxidermized, if that's a word. And he, she brings it in, and he kind of like just puts it on his bed, and he just lays down with it, which is really weird. But then he looks up drowning in dreams, and he's trying to find out what it means and all this. And Dylan walks in and asks, like, oh, who are you drowning in the dream? And he says, oh, it was Bradley. And, he's like, and then Dylan says something really cool. Like, he's like, okay, well, would you actually hurt anyone in real life? And he says, no, of course not. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hurt anyone. So that's kind of, you know, he's saying what he feels. But again, he goes into that, like, rage mode. And he doesn't even know what he's doing. And of course he would hurt someone. Uh, that scene before with he killed his dad. And he tried to kill uh, Dylan at that one point in the kitchen with the meat tenderizer. So, again, I, himself, he doesn't want to. But because of his little, like, blackouts, we, he's really unpredictable. And this one makes him a really cool character, too. Um, then Dylan, he's at his, like, place where he works, and all those people that he brought, the workers, are sorting all the, like, the weed plants and everything, they're, like, sorting it, making it into smaller packages, blah, 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 and Dylan goes to his, like, boss and asks him, you know, uh, can I take, um, the office, Bradley's dad's office, and he says, like, you know, go ahead, whatever, so now he has access to the office, um, then, so weirdly enough, Norma's Norman's teacher sees him after school and asks him to like publish one of the stories he wrote and it kind of brings up a lot of stuff with the teacher and I don't know if the teacher has feelings for Norman I don't think so but it's brought up that she has like some a troubled past also so she's like you know I know how you feel and like oh I love this line that you wrote in your uh, story here that you know it's like a man burning on the inside and something's wrong and never something never feels right and she's like oh I can relate to that blah 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 so you can see that the teacher really relates to Norman is that gonna go somewhere maybe maybe not it might be just filler but I, I feel like it's going somewhere so it's gonna be interesting to see how that develops with Norman and his teacher but again her past is very troubled so I don't know a storyline could pop up from that maybe someone from her past we don't know but it was kind of cool to see a little bit something different than just Sheriff Romero Dylan Norma you know all that um, then Sheriff Romero goes to the Bates Motel and Norma shows him the card and he says, you know, we ran the information on this Jake guy, and all the information he gave doesn't match. So he made up that he doesn't exist. So he's like, okay, let me sweep the room he was in for fingerprints. And Norma said, oh, I heard he cleaned it and everything. Like, that's so that's a bummer. And she did clean it, and there was, like, alcohol everywhere and all this stuff. So, oh, well. So like, she kind of messed up there. Um, then Bradley meets with Dylan, and they're in, like, a little diner, and... She's, and Dylan kind of says, okay, I'll pack up the boxes for you, and you can just take the stuff. I don't want to smuggle you in there because I might get in trouble. And she says, you know, all I wanted to see was something of his because I, my mom threw everything that was his out. Like, I don't have any remember anything to remember him by. Like, I just want to see his stuff. So, she, you know, Dylan all feels all bad and says, fine, all right, I'll get you in there. Then there's something stupid that was, I guess, meant to be a joke, but I didn't find it funny at all. I just found it stupid was that uh, Emma talks to one of the people in the motel because of course she's like kind of in charge of the motel uh but the Bates motel when Norma's like out so she's like in charge and one of the guys there one of like the stoners gave her like a weed muffin and she eats it and gets high it was just like a really awkward moment and it was just stupid I, it was just I don't know it was meant to give you a laugh I guess it was kind of funny but I don't know it was just stupid to me it just didn't make me laugh I guess I just thought it was stupid but I'm sure a lot of people did find it funny so I can see why they put it in there but whatever um so yeah Norman then kind of confronts his mother and basically says you know I don't want to move and he actually yells at her that you're crazy so you can see that Dylan's thoughts are kind of being put into Norman's mind now and at first we do agree with Dylan that Norma is kind of crazy but now that we that we found out a couple episodes back that while well, she's doing all this for Norman because he has these like crazy blackout rage moments that she's actually good so she's just trying to do the best for Norman but Norman obviously can't see that so he yells at her you're crazy and all that it's kind of finally cool to finally see someone lash out at Norma even though Dylan does it all the time but just to see for someone else and uh, so then after that Dylan sneaks Bradley into the office and uh, Dylan's partner the older guy shoots at him and thinks like someone's breaking in so then he confronts him and says, you know, like, you know what position you put me in that you brought someone in here? Like, I could get killed for this. And he just says, you know what, just go. Just get out of here. And uh, so then they go into the office and, yeah. And uh, it was really just awkward, I guess, because she goes in there and she says, okay, I'm going to start looking through everything. And Dylan says, okay, I'll leave you alone. And she says, no, I like having you here. So we can see, like, something's 
coming between Dylan and Bradley now, even though Norman and Bradley, I, this is what I think is going to happen. Dylan's going to hook up with Bradley, Norman's going to get really jealous because he's already angry at, at Bradley, and he's going to kill Bradley. That's what I think is going to happen, but we'll see, I guess. Um, so then, yes, yeah, so she's like, oh, I want you here, and she finds a letter, and she just runs out right away crying because she found out that her dad was actually cheating on her mom with someone else, and they hug Dylan and Bradley hug so we can see something's between them again. And the woman he was seeing signed with B. So we don't know who this B is, but we know her name starts with B. And I'm going to make a guess and say that it's the person in top of Gil. Because Gil's the guy that uh, Dylan works for. I think that she's over him in seniority. She's like the head. I, that's what I would think. Um, so then Dylan kind of goes back to her uh, his teacher and says, You know what? I don't want to publish the story anymore. And, again, she's like, you know, I know what it's like for you. Don't be ashamed, blah, blah, blah. Some more bonding with the teacher. And then, Norma, is like, these are, this is the last scene of the episode. Norma goes to, um, like, the, the place where she wants to list her motel again, the one that sold them to her. She's like, okay, you know, I want the open house to start tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, no, we can't do an open house. I can't sell your motel anymore. She's like, why? Uh, well, you know, it's worth about half of what you bought it at right now. So I can't really do anything. It's pretty much worthless because of the, uh, the construction that's going to go on. And she gets just so angry, Norma, that she just starts beating him with a purse. With her purse. And I was just dying of laughter. It was just hilarious seeing her just smack him with a purse. Even though, you know, she's killed like a couple people at this point and it's like okay you know what i'm just gonna use my purse it was just really funny to me i don't know um so yeah so then she leaves the place all angry she's like almost crying and she gets in the car she sits down just like calms down then all of a sudden the creepy guy with the creepy eyebrows jake just pops out of the back and just puts his hand over Nomer's mouth with a gun to her head so yeah we've seen uh jake finally this whole episode he's like been teased and now we finally see him and um, he says, you know what, Shelby, Shelby owed me $150,000, and I know you know where the money is. Can you give it to me tomorrow, by tomorrow night? And she says, yes, yes, I can bring it. She says, bring it tomorrow, or I'll kill your son first, and then I'll kill you. And then he just gets out and leaves. Wow, that was a big moment right there, the best moment of the whole episode. And basically, next episode, the season finale, will probably be a big showdown between Norma, Dylan, uh, Norman and this uh, Jake guy. So, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna die? We don't know. Uh, but I'm sure there's gonna be at least a, one death in the next episode, maybe two. We'll uh, we'll see where that goes. But uh, another little conspiracy thing I have is I think Sheriff Romero is part of this like sex slave thing too, because he just seems really fishy and really like I don't want to help you. So I just I feel like he has a part in it. So we'll see where that goes too. And, um, yeah, I thought it was an okay episode. Kind of, some characters act out of their character, which was kind of weird. And another thing I feel with this episode is that, even the series in general, it feels like the stories don't flow together. Like, the story arcs and what's happening. It feels like just one thing happens and then just another weird thing happens. Which, it doesn't flow right and I just, it doesn't... It doesn't feel right to me. It just feels really out of place, like, just the events. And I know it is supposed to because it's a weird town, weird things happening, blah, blah, blah. But it's just a little it's just a little out of place for me. That's, that's my comment on the series so far. But I have liked it so far. It kept me entertained, although some parts were a little boring to me. But I have to say this episode was pretty good. Um, I was thoroughly entertained, especially at the end with the purse beating and then Jake coming out of nowhere. But next episode will be spectacular, I am. I'm going to tell you right now gonna be a big fight gunfight we'll see who dies we'll see who lives but until then i just want to say thank you guys don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later see ya